Where are you coming from, Spider-Man? We know Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man. We all know Tom Harlan as the Web Slinger. And even us older fans remember Nicholas Hamilton as the live-action TV Spider-Man. But there was another, Danny Segrin. His name might not be as famous as Andrew Garfield, but he deserves being remembered as the first ever live-action Spider-Man. And his Spider-Man made a lot of kids fans of the Web Slinger at a very early age. No dogs allowed. Who would do anything so cruel? Spoil somebody's lunch by giving him a rubber glove sandwich. So who was Dan? As many of us were fans of his Spider-Man, we really didn't know who was under that mask, and we really didn't care. Dan is a trained dancer, and it shows in his work as Spider-Man. He was also a puppeteer who worked with Jim Henson from 1968 and into the early 70s. Although he didn't officially play the big yellow bird on Sesame Street, but Danny did take over the role of Big Bird for episode 83 when Carl Spiney was sick. There were only 29 episodes of the 3-5 to five minute Spider-Man shorts during the children television series, The Electric Company, but it seemed like to us kids there were dozens. Kids in the 70s would sit in front of the TV and hope that Spidey Super Stories would be on that episode, and if it wasn't, we were very let down. But once the skit opened, the kids were all singing along with a catchy, fun theme song. Here he comes, your friendly neighborhood web slinger. Today, Spidey meets the prankster. The skits were very pun heavy, but it worked really well for Spider-Man. Marvel even did a series of comic books based on the Spider-Man from these shorts that ran an impressive eight years. That was five years longer than the Spidey shorts ran for its three years on the electric company. Danny got the role of Spider-Man after putting on the costume and jumping around the producer's office of the electric company. Leaping from the desk to the floor a number of times, the producers knew they had the right man for the job and hired him on the spot. Spider-Man was already a household name, and this new public access children television show was worried they would never be able to get the rights to have Spider-Man on their show, but they were able to reach a deal with Marvel, as Marvel gave the electric company the rights of Spider-Man for free. Marvel saw it as a win to help kids and also reach a new audience with their Spider-Man character. A win for both companies. Oh, Spider-Man, am I glad to see you. Some big furry monster just came in here and sat on my double scoop fudge ripple ice cream cone. Danny never once spoke to Spider-Man during these shorts. A thought bubble would appear over his head, so it was like you were watching a live-action comic book. This made sure that the kids watching the skit would have to read along if they wanted to know the story. The Electric Company Spider-Man shorts were fun, silly, and cheap. But no kid at the time really cared. We all loved seeing who Spider-Man would fight in that episode. And as soon as it was over, we were jumping off the sofa, onto the coffee table, and back to the sofa. You take ten? This must be my lucky day. What is our hero doing with ten frozen ices? If he eats them all, he won't be able to fit into his costume. For many of us, this was our very first introduction to Spider-Man, even before we read a Spider-Man comic. Let me know in the comments below, do you remember Spider-Man from the Electric Company? Were you a fan of it also? Let me know all that and more in the comments below. And until the next video, please subscribe to the channel, hit thumb up so I know you like my content, and we'll talk again soon. Junkman. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.